Hi, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Ridge Farm, and here's Teddy. And we are back in the greenhouse for 2024 seeds. Yay! So me and Teddy are making soil blocks today to start our 2024 seeds. It's February 8th, a little bit later than last year, but if you watch my video from last year in February in the greenhouse, um, there was snow and today it's uh, it's 59 right now, but it's gonna be 70. I don't know what's going on, but we are getting started just as if it's February 8th. So we had grand plans this year to have the greenhouse organization and cleanup done before we had to start seeds. Um, that didn't happen. It was really warm or really cold and then it was warm and here we are at the house. I did finish the organization of the house but that doesn't matter right now. Anyway, so Annie is back there sorting pots and trying to get them into our big organized-ish uh, pot wall. We've got a lot of like reused pots this year or uh, whatever, we're reusing them. Uh, let me show you that. All of this is um like recycled containers oh, my hand wow um stuff we got from an amish plant sale plug trays from where i've ordered uh or friends have ordered plugs or whatever i'm just i'm trying to get all this and then we've got all of that back there which is um re reusing pots where pots we're reusing trays we're reusing uh this is all the new stuff much neater looking um but still worth it to reuse what we can. I am working with the Swift Locker now, just trying to fill it up and make one more tray. Let me show you what these look like after I Swift Locker. I guess it's kind of half under my dirt tray here. There's the whole thing. It makes 72 soil blocks all at once, enough to fit in one of my 1020 trays. So over here, these are two trays I did. These are bachelor buttons. Usually I get a really good germination rate with these pretty quickly. Um, we've got like three days where the volume will be below freezing at night and it's gonna be in the 60s during the day. So I'm hoping that they will germinate fine in here. And I won't have to use my temperature controlled germination chamber. All these little guys are um, uh, different plants that usually take longer to germinate and or need something special like uh, I don't even know what I did with the rest of my trees. Oh, they're in the chair over there. Ah, okay, those stacked um, like brownie pans with their soil blocks, those are all snapdragons and those use light to germinate so I'm going to put them in a um, a special box I have that will control the temperature and keep them um, keep them above, I don't know, like 60. So the snapdragons don't need it to be super warm, but uh, they are going to germinate better with a light on them 24 hours. Sounds weird, but they germinate faster that way. The rest of these are all other cool weather flowers that would probably be fine. I think I've got one of Nigella one verbena and two yarrow so far I'm getting ready to do a bee's friend in this tray because those germinate really easily and um they end quickly so they should stay with the bachelor buttons and then i'm going to do those three trays there i don't even remember what else is on my list i'll show you in a minute okay so now i'm using the mini soil blocker um Swift Blocker, the company that makes the big soil blocker, actually makes one that makes a similar size block as this. Um, in, I think these are three quarter inch. They make a like nine inch um, block that is actually taller and uh, is the big, like this. Uh, I think they also make a smaller one. You hear the wind in here? It is insane. Anyway, but I need at this point to fill this tray not this whole thing um, with these seeds so I haven't invested in the bigger um, the swift blocker yet I can make these pretty quick only problem is I'm getting uh, blisters across my knuckles but we'll deal with that 
pretty soon I'm gonna have to go in the house because I forgot some seeds. But let's see if I can show you this one. Can you see the plastic moving? I'm telling myself that the whole greenhouse is not going to blow away. Hopefully it's not. All right, so I'm back in the greenhouse. This is day three. I know I just told you I was going to show you something in a minute and then I stopped filming because we got so overwhelmed with seeds popping up everywhere. So I have a lot of my seeds started in these little containers here. I'll show you this one. Um, these go into the house or into the germination chamber. This, in this case, I was using my uh, bread proofing box. It is, you can set the temperature. So it was set at about 75 and this is status. And see all those germinated seeds? So we have to get those out of there before they root into the paper towel because then that causes problems. Um, so these are getting moved to soil blocks. These are all status varieties. This one is all cabbage varieties and those will be getting moved into these trays because I sell them by the four pack. Um, I don't even know what this one is. Oh, this one's Safanaria. That's getting moved into the these baby soil blocks, two three quarter inch blocks. Um, this is all straw flowers. This this will get moved into three quarter inch blocks, but um, in a bigger tray. Who knows what this is? Oh, this is Chinese forget me nots. They stain the paper towels bad, but um, they're starting to grow. So I grew them last year in three quarter blocks, and they did fine. So they were going in there. Um, and this one is the Saponaria, So that means. The other one was something else. Oh, Larkspur, that's Larkspur. Anyway, those will go into tiny soil blocks too. So this is our list, what I've been working with for my early February starts. We have all of these. The number in the parentheses is what I need. Then there's a number and some dirt that tells me what, um, what size. These are small soil blocks, 72 tray cell soil. Those are the big soil blocks. Um, some of them I'm going to winter sow, some of them I am doing in like an open um, broadcast sort of method, and I keep this note so that I know how I did it each year, and then I go back and look. And then these are like, I'm doing two 48 cell trays, and if it has a PT, it means I started it in a paper towel. If it doesn't have a PT, it didn't get started in a paper towel, except I never updated this, because this cauliflower was done and it was in a paper towel but the uh, lettuce we did in open trays which are in the germination chamber now holding at between 67 and 75 degrees um, so they don't have to go through the cold night and slow down their germination process all right we're on day five of this first round of seed starting um don't know if you can tell but that's snow so we went from starting seeds when it was 70 outside to snowing. Here's what I'm doing right now. These are um, straw flower seeds that I put in this paper towel and they are germinating in here in the house where it's warm. And then I transfer each seed to one of these soil blocks and then I'll sprinkle vermiculite on them. This way we don't have empty blocks for the most part. Um, they're all germinated seeds. I have so many in here because I thought they would be poor germination from this variety so I did a whole bunch and there's not. It's not bad at all. This is the first day they've been germinated and there are a ton. Okay hopefully the sound is all right in here. We're on about a weekend of seed starting, week in, and um, showed you how we're getting started. All of these are baby flowers for the flower farm in three quarter inch soil blocks. These are all varieties that I started in these soil blocks last year. And if you look close, we have babies. These are all straw flowers. Um, I know there's some baby fever few in here. There's one there. Uh, there's more straw flowers. These are a little behind. These, without the vermiculite, are all snapdragons. Snapdragons need light to germinate, so I leave the vermiculite off, um, which they dry out a little faster that way. But I had to take the 
Um, they have domes on them normally, or lids. Uh, I had to take those off because it was getting just way too hot in here because we're outside and the temperature outside is 60 degrees and so the greenhouse is getting pretty warm. Um, anyway, these are Rebecca. There's none in there. So uh, Persian crests always overperforming. The sage is sprouting. You can see one right there. There's, I think these are more straw flowers and I just forgot to label them, but I will see when they come up. The thyme in this one, you can see one right there. This is chamomile. There are tons of chamomile. They're super tiny. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There, and then if we turn around, I've got a whole bunch more. Um, most of the is on this side aren't uh, sprouting, except those are scaviosa and saphonaria. The rest are not quite up yet. But I pretty much got all the flowers in this greenhouse except for the bachelor buttons and the status. Those are in the big greenhouse um, because they are in bigger soil blocks. The status last year um, did really, really well in the 72 cell size swift blocker. All right, now we're outside the small greenhouse. I'm closing up my fancy chicken wire door thing. It's really just like an old um, window frame I found in the barn that just happened to fit in this space. And then it's, I thought having a lower two thirds door would keep the cats out with chicken wire, but it didn't. So I had to extend it up. We got a fan going in there now because it's so hot. The bulbs are bad about something. Um, but this old this greenhouse gets a lot warmer than the big ones, so we get faster because it only has a door and then it has that little window. Um, this greenhouse is five years old. Um, the plastic is four years old. It's in pretty good shape, actually. I'm really happy with the plastic. Um, I'll put a link to the plastic we use in our Amazon storefront in the description. But the point of all this is that we're going to have to tear this thing down and rebuild it probably next year. If we'd had time, I would have done it this year because it has a wooden floor under this, all this carpet and um, foam and stuff I put on the floor to insulate it because it was just a poor design choice. Um, see, we have it uh, stuffed with hay to keep air from flowing under it because those are pallets and that works pretty well at keeping it warmer and the ground was uneven so we just we put this in to try to level it not realizing how much cooler it would make it inside of there at night being raised up off the ground like it just doesn't hold heat at all um and these boards are rotting the pallets are rotting after um just around the edges where the water comes down. If we did the end here just a little bit differently, it wouldn't be so bad. We added some great stuff, foam insulation, which you can see right there to block some of the holes because the mice were getting in so bad because it was um, so open. Anyway, uh, we're just gonna have to redo this whole thing. I'm not sure what, how we're gonna do that or where it's gonna be. Um, is this one is right in the middle of our vegetable garden. The other two greenhouses over there. This is our um, berry patch, blackberries, raspberries. We have some garden beds back here. These are onions in a little while, not yet. Um, that's garlic. There's a compost pile back there, but we're gonna be moving the fence. The fence was here. That's why these weeds are so bad. Um, we're actually gonna um, extend the weed fabric a little bit, and then the fence is gonna be back in the middle of this. Uh, so that um, we can put weed fabric under the fence and keep it neater because this was making me crazy being so close to the garden and I couldn't weed eat it because the bottom of our fence was chicken wire and the top of the like you just can't weed eat chicken wire it doesn't work anyway I'm going back to the big new greenhouse we're calling this greenhouse number three um, order of age. My kids really hate that I named them one, two, and three. So we might have to come up with something more creative. No, not. Teddy is in my seat with an iPad. Get out of my seat. I 
gotta check these seeds. But if you've ever had a mouse in the greenhouse, you would know it can do insane amounts of damage overnight. Um, we saw a mouse in the greenhouse with all of our veggie seedlings yesterday. So I set up all of my humane traps and I threw out a few sticky traps just in case and the sticky traps caught the mouse and the mouse is now done. <coughs> the one mouse. I'm sure there are more mice. Okay, I wanted to talk about containers for soil blocks really quickly. Um, ooh, almost my drink over. This one, this is just like a little like to-go container. Let's see, Glad brand. We got those at Costco. This is our second year using them. They don't even like show any use of or wear or anything. They're just, they wash, dishwasher safe. Um, so the lid is supposed to go like this which goes up, so it gives the plants a little more room if you're wanting to cover them, which I mean, normally you would not put a lid on your plants when they are growing, but only when they're germinating. And also you can stack these when they're germinating um, to keep them in a warmer spot. So I keep mine in a germination chamber so I can stack these in with this, this way it's lower. And then when my tomatoes are little babies, I put it this way and it gives a little plant room and cover for overnight in the greenhouse so it keeps it just a little bit warmer and then I take the lid off during the day. Um, these, this particular tray which I was able to get in bulk, it's pretty sturdy and does not um, have a lid unfortunately. I had some that did have lids uh, that you saw in the other greenhouse that are a little shorter and smaller and they're way better but I cannot find them anywhere. But these we were able to find a big package of, and these hold 120 mini blocks. Um, the downside of these is that they are kind of tall. I've also been using a lot of these mushroom containers. These are uh, mushrooms companies. Um, you can use these for soil blocks, but you can also just fill them about halfway with dirt and use them to broadcast seed and get it sprouted. As you can see here, we have a assortment of berry containers as well. Um, these have more holes, uh, so they don't stay as wet. We usually put a paper towel in the bottom to just kind of keep some of the moisture in. My um, son is sprouting acorns in these. So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully this video is not just a complete mess and it um, gives you an idea of what's going on on our farm in February. <laughs>